Hey, listen, today I fell for another Facebook ad. It snookered me into buying a VAC1, a vacuum method of making coffee from Colombia, here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with uh, Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Saga Talk. And welcome to the Ovis Lab. Hey, listen, today we're talking about the back air brewer. And the back air brewer is something that I saw on Facebook. I got snookered again. There was a Facebook ad that came by. And this is just another method, a new method of uh, making drip coffee. It's a product that's made in Colombia. I guess that sort of intrigued me too. And it used vacuum suction to make it work. So anyway, uh, it's arrived. I'm going to go ahead and unpack this, see the parts that are in it. Uh, and then we're going to follow the instructions and make some coffee. Now, the VAC Air Brewer apparently, uh, at least in the ad, this is what it said, it can do both uh, cold brew and uh, drip method of making coffee. Get this out of here. I love these ones where we unbox stuff and you, you try it for the first time. There you go. You can see the Colombian flag right there. That's oh, yeah. interesting. You don't see too many products coming out of Colombia, but I mean, one of the most well-recognized coffee-producing countries, right? Uh, Colombia. So uh, it's called the VAC-1 or the VAC, and it's called Coffee and Cold Brew Maker. Okay, so uh, that's what it's all about. Let me go ahead and get this uh, opened up here. And... Not the most environmentally friendly packaging. Uh, a lot of styrofoamish kind of stuff here, but I, I guess we can live with that. Uh, for the moment, we don't have any choice. We've, we've got this already. There's some kind of uh, USB charging cord, what looks like a uh, stir stick, uh, the proverbial coffee measuring scoop, mm -hmm. which nobody really knows what, what volume that is or what weight that is. And it looks like I got this upside down. And then the actual vacuum method, which seems to be coming in some parts. So there's like a, a coaster thing, there's a beaker, and then there's the, the brew chamber or the brewing mechanism. So uh, let's take a look at these various parts. Let me get this box back out of the way first. So the coaster, I guess that sort of makes uh, sense. Uh, wait, there's got to be instructions somewhere, too. Sorry about this. Oh, yeah. I'm very, very pleased that you're going to actually read the instructions. <laughs> Things don't usually go that way around here. No. Nope. <laughs> there's a solicitation for some Latin American coffee here. King Quintel coffee, but I don't think we'll be doing that. To, we're in the coffee business. We've got our own coffee. And then the instructions. Okay, I'm not going to repackage that stuff right now because that might just be a little too boring for everybody. Um, these parts come apart. There's on this brewing chamber. Uh, if you if you look, there's a there's definitely a plastic ring right here that creates quite a seal on this beaker so it's not like you could use any beaker uh, it's obviously specifically designed for that and this looks like a place where you would charge so there there in fact oh, I got that it. USB connection and that would go in there and this would go here because there's a pump in here and that has to get uh, charged up and then what else I don't know if there's a filter yeah there's some kind of filter in here too. So let me see if I can get that out. Well, not so easily, but there's this little ring of a filter, just a micro mesh, and that goes in the bottom uh, down here. Okay. I don't so, think I've ever seen a filter quite like that. No? Uh, well, I mean, you know, French press is essentially uh, a, a mesh and... Uh, well, it's just that it's so small. Oh, it's very small right uh but i think there's a reason for that and because it, it works on this whole vacuum thing so it doesn't need the service area it's going to actually pull uh the coffee through uh, but let me see about these instructions here got to find the english one we have it in spanish cafe caliente did i say that right caliente caliente hot hot but, coffee and then uh and then what's funny is 
on, on the Spanish version of cold brew, it says cold brew. So, gotcha. Whatever. So, but the English coffee, hot coffee, uh, we have to secure the filter, pour four scoops in or 25 grams of fine medium ground and add uh, hot water that's uh, basically 190 degrees. They don't want it to be actually boiling. Um, then we got to stir the coffee and hit the pump. So uh, I've got some setup to do here, including charging this mechanism. So let me go do that and we'll be right back in a second. Okay, we're back, and I've charged up the, the, the vacuum pump here. I've put some hot water in these cups to preheat them, because we're going to try this coffee in the end. Uh, I have some hot water uh, behind me and some coffee ready to go here. As I mentioned, they're recommending 25 grams, and now what they say is for a normal cup of coffee, it'll be 350 milliliters for a... Uh, 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 Let's see, for a strong coffee, you use 300 milliliters, and for a lighter coffee, 400 milliliters. Now, they also give us some hash marks here. I don't know if you can see those. I can feel them right yep. there, right? I see them. And those are supposed to be sort of one, two, three, uh, light, normal, uh, or strong, normal, light, more water, lighter, and so on. But uh, I think. We're gonna go with 400 because with 400 milliliters, we would normally do about 24 grams. We're re recommending 25. So I think we're gonna go with that strength because we're gonna try the cup of coffee, right? right. And, and we wanna sort of compare it to the strength that we normally uh, do it at. Uh, so first we'll start with, uh, with some coffee and we'll uh, sort of get our scale. I should have put this on first because then it would have been teared out right away, but I'm gonna just tear that out. And there we are, zero. And I've got kind of a dark roast here. It's not Big B Best. I'm actually using espresso blend. I know that sounds strange, but you can also use espresso blend for drip coffee. It's just fine. It tastes great. Uh, I have my normal scoop, which um, uh, it's just a way of getting the coffee out. I'm going to use their scoop because they say four scoops equals 25 grams. So let's see if that's true. Uh, one, two, three. You know what? Four. What is it at? 24.9. So it's a little heavy. It's, but it's a little heavy, right? Well, but not... Oh, wait. It's supposed to be 25. Yeah. Oh, well, let me get one more bean in there. So I guess their four scoop thing would work. Now, this happens to be a French roast, so the beans are really light. What if this was a much lighter roast where the beans would have been heavier, right? Would it have been the same? I don't think so. But anyway, um, usually I think volumetric controls don't work, apparently. This is a magical scoop and it works, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna give this a spray uh, and that's to reduce static electricity. I do wanna mention that they gave us sort of a, a grind uh, uh, suggestion here. So for, for hot coffee, uh, between fine and coarse, they want you to be somewhere 30% in between. I don't really know how to interpret that, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go with about a 15 on the Barazzo, so, you know, uh, less than auto drip, uh, closer to like a V60 or something like that. That's what we're gonna be at. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this coffee in. And grind it up, but um, I've already ground coffee, you know me. As usual. Yep. So, uh, love the smell of that. And I'm just gonna pour this in sort of around, you know, cause it's like a donut shape mm -hmm. and so, uh, you, you want that, I think, to be evenly distributed. They don't really talk anything about that, but I'm kind of getting messy with it because I got it all over the top and all that. But maybe I'll give it a shake and that'll sort of level it out. This uh, coaster that they gave me is kind of sticking to the bottom, and I think that that's good. Is, is that what you want? Maybe it's supposed to. I have to somebody's trying to call me on my on my watch right now so um but i think if it like this this was a marble surface or a granite surface or something like that it would be nice to have the coaster on it because this is uh this is glass here mm -hmm. okay so uh well let's get our scale back up and get this whole mechanism on and so we're going to tear it out because we're going to put 400, 400 mils in right and i've got water at about 190 they don't want it to be boiling. I don't know if that's about the plastic or, or, or the pumping mechanism or whatever, but apparently that would be damaging uh, to it. But we know 
one gram of water is equal to one milliwater. So using the scale allows us to get it exactly right. And we'll add our 400. Uh, I'm going to practice the idea of a bloom, which means that uh, we're going to get about 50, six, 50 grams, <laughs> 50 grams of water. And first wait a few minutes, you know, let, let the grounds absorb the water a little bit. Uh, let the gas come off a little bit because remember uh, coffee traps CO2 and nitrogen if you bloom that'll sort of poof off and uh, It'll just make for a better extraction altogether and uh, but now I'll get uh, the balance of uh, the hot water in Which would be 400 milliliters in this particular case. There's no instructions like fast pour vigorous pour you know, try to agitate, don't agitate, it says kind of get the water in. And so that's what we're going to do as aggressively as this gooseneck will allow it to happen because, you know, I love my fellow uh, gooseneck here and it does a really good job of regulating uh, the, the rate at which water comes out. Um, uh, and that's really ideal for a typical pour over. But it's not good to be in a hurry. No, you can't be in a hurry at all. I got to be getting close, right? You're at 380, okay. 394. Okay, super. How do you line up with the hash marks? Well, I'd have to, uh, um, well, because I'd be at the top one. I must be at the top one at this at this point in time. Yes. That's... Yeah, almost perfectly. Almost that's good. perfectly, yeah. So um, the idea isn't to, um, to let this steep or anything like that. They do ask you to take the stir stick and sort of break the crust. You know how we do that in uh, a French press and we're looking for the grounds which all float up to the top. This is true in cowboy coffee also. Um, the grounds want to stay at the top, but if you sort of break the crust, they'll float to the bottom. And at this point, it's like, go ahead and get it going. And so, you, Push this button here and the vacuum process should start. Well, it definitely sped up the flow by like a lot. Well, yeah, and it's, they don't really want a lot to come through without the vacuum uh, pump. But what's interesting is you almost get some version of crema here, right? Yeah, you can uh, see it. Like, yeah. It almost looks like it's carbonated. Well, and, and, and that's probably because of the pressure, uh, the vacuum pressure here. You know, like when we do espresso, we get crema, which is really trapped CO2, where there's surfactants that create that particular bubble and that kind of thing. And, and I, if you want to know more about crema in general, uh, we have an episode uh, that we did on Espresso called The Flare, and we'll put that up in the corner. But the second half of that video goes into detail about the idea of crema. Well, that was a pretty quick cup of coffee. This wasn't like doing a pour over or anything like that. Uh, and you can see now that all the water is gone. Yep. And if, if I thought all the water uh, uh, wasn't gone, I guess I could, you know, give the button another little push and uh, it would uh, pull the rest of it out. Uh, they don't want you to take it off right away. I think we've waited enough right now, but when you take it off, they want you to sort of hold onto the handle and push up from the bottom because there is a, uh, a vacuum uh, suction there. Okay. Well, one thing I would note uh, about this is that, um, I mean, this is very interesting. We'll try it here in a second and see if it uh, tastes good too. Uh, I don't know if I like the noise of it. You know, like if I'm making coffee first thing in the morning, do I want to hear, you know, all the way through it? I don't know. It might sort of interrupt the, the, the feeling I have about coffee. Uh, but you know what? It's really not as bad as the Barazza grinder, which is like, you know, and that kind true. of thing. But we, there's a difference, <laughs> right? <laughs> it also looks like it's kind of complicated to clean up because I, I bet you can't put that in the dishwasher because of the pump. Right. You're not allowed to put it in the dishwasher, but you can run water over this. And so, you know, you would first uh, dump out the grounds so that you could put it in your compost and then uh, it's just like flush with water just just rinse it out uh, and it's that simple right and maybe you take a, a little paper towel and go around the rim or something like that to get the oils because that's the one thing that you would worry about but definitely they say don't put it in the in the dishwasher okay I've preheated these cups a little bit uh, but let me dump that 
uh, water off. And, um, you know, even though it's sort of uh, against our religion, the idea of, uh, you know, sugar and cream, babe, I did get you uh, some sugar. And... I don't think it's against our religion. <laughs> well, you know, not everybody believes that cream and, and sugar is necessary. necessary. I know. Right. So um, and I'll try to just kind of do this by color for you. That's probably still a little too milky. Of course, we did do the lighter cup version uh, of this. And uh, I put two sugar cubes in. Make sure those get chopped up. Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. I know this is the only way that you know how to test coffee because otherwise you're like, mm -hmm. you know. So there's your cup. I'm going to let you grab that. I'm going to grab you. mine and give it a sip. Mm. Well, I think it makes a fine uh, a fine cup of coffee. I, I, I can't find anything uh, a matter with this. Uh, it's a little bit of an immersion method. Uh, it's a, it, it comes out with a little bit of pressure, so, you know, not nine bars like an espresso. Uh, I think it's better than I thought it would be mm -hmm. uh, at this point in no, time. No, I think it's good. Yeah. Let me have another sip. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, since it doesn't use a paper filter, you get all the body and all the oils. And, you know, I like that, too. So, well, on that note, uh, let me break down and reset up so that we can do the cold brew. We'll be right back. All right, we're back and we're ready to do our cold brew. We've got some ice and some glasses here and some cold water. Now, uh, the recommendation for cold brew is to use uh, basically seven grams uh, more of coffee, 32 grams or five scoops. We're gonna test out this scoop thing again. <laughs> uh, and this time we're gonna be using 300 milliliters of uh, water. So it's gonna be much more concentrated right. uh, as it goes through. All right, so let me go ahead and, and get uh, the scale teared out here. And like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna give this scoop thing another try. So 32 grams should be five scoops, one, two, three, four, five. How are we doing? 29.3. Ah, okay. So, well, not too bad, not but there you go. Bad. You know, volumetric doesn't always work, but... 31.1, 31 31.6, 1. 0.8, 0. 0.32.2. Okay, I think that that's like, uh, I'm going to take one bean off and call it uh, good. That's perfect. But, you know... You know, the reason to do all this weighing and, and measuring is if, if you want your coffee, you know, to be consistent, that is, you know, you, you made it this way yesterday and you want the same cup tomorrow. If you control the variables like weight and volume, uh, it makes all the difference in the world. You can always get sort of the same cup out of the same uh, kind of coffee. Okay, uh, we need to get this ground up. Now, they do suggest that for cold brew, it's a little bit finer. So I took it down a couple of notches on the Baratza. Uh, to a 12 and that should make it a little bit finer. Did I spray this yet? I don't think so. That gets Never rid hurts. of uh, static electricity. Well, you don't want too much water. The beans start sticking to the side wall. But anyway, um, <laughs> oh, I've already pre-ground coffee, so I got to be careful how much uh, actually goes through there. I was uh, uh, daydreaming because I was thinking you said it never hurts, you know, to add that water. It truly doesn't hurt to spritz water on. It doesn't change the flavor profile at all. Remember, we're going to add water to whatever we do, but it really does reduce that uh, static electricity. So uh, again, let me get some of this stuff out of the way here. Uh, we don't need the scale anymore because I, I measured off 300 mils of water. Now I could verify, see how close we get. Let's do that. Let's, yeah, let's do that. I mean, you know, did I hit the hash mark exactly on 300? I don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of backpedaling as I'm talking here that 300 mils will equal 300 grams. Uh, so I did tear that out. I got to get the coffee in. Um, and this is, Oops. that's a little bit of a messy process. I'm, I've decided just to pour go it, it on. And, and then brush it off. And brush it off and, and just don't worry about it too much, you know. Uh, do need to give it a shake to level it out. Uh, they don't say to do that, but it seems to make sense to me. Okay, um, 32 grams of coffee, 300 mils. I'm going to tear this out again, and we're going to see if 
if my measuring was accurate or not. Now, uh, the idea is you just pour this in, and I'm just gonna pour this in. There's no blooming here, right? Because we just don't have that, um, you know, when, when you bloom with heat, there's that immediate friction created by the heat that does release the gas. That doesn't happen in any kind of cold brew. And um, how many grams? 306, so I'm, I'm six grams over. God. I gotta get a better measuring cup. <laughs> Uh, they do recommend stirring this, and you have to stir this one too because there's dry ground sitting on top here, and so we do need all of them to get hydrated. And you know, whether it was the cold method or the hot method, they do want it to sit in here for about one minute. But one minute is like to me the total time that it takes to get all the water in and to give it a stir and stuff like that. You know, one thing about methods that uh, don't use paper, and you can kind of see, I don't know if you can get in close here, but you do pull some sedimentation uh, along here. Yeah, I see. It. Right? Yeah. And uh, we don't mind that. We don't mind having that sedimentation because it usually falls to the bottom of the cup. You just want to watch your last swig. But I was also thinking, you know, just as we went out in the last segment, we were talking about not having to use a paper filter. Then I'm like, this is easy to clean, which it was. I was able to rinse it out and everything. But then I'm saying, take a paper towel and, and get the oils out. And well, that's the wrong idea, right. right? I'm right back to using a piece of paper. I did just go ahead and use a towel for that. So I just want to let everybody know that before somebody starts busting my chops. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think we can go ahead and hit this now. And by the way, if this works, this would be the fastest cold brew method that we've ever discovered right? Uh, we've done the sole hand and we'll put that up here. Uh, we've done a variety uh, of methods, including using a mason jar, and we'll put that one up here too. Uh, but if this works, this would be uh, the, the fasted, fastest method uh, we've ever seen. Now they said to use, um, you know, room temperature water, uh, and that's, that's in very bold print. My concern is I'm looking at it right now, it looks a little weak. But it does cold brew does, right? Because you don't have the heat uh, um, uh, dissolving the solubles in the same way, right? And that's usually why you have to let it sit overnight for such a long period of time. So it looks a little weak to me. Uh, maybe uh, if we were to redo this, uh, we would go ahead. There's that what is that noise, right? Yeah, right. You said it reminded you of one of those blade zip grinders, right? Yeah, or a mosquito. Or like a mosquito, at 3 yeah, in a mosquito the flying through the air, right? <laughs> totally, totally. So, uh, you know, maybe there would be cause to let this sit in, it, in, in the chamber a little bit longer before you actually hit the vacuum button, but let's not judge it too quickly yet. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and uh, pour us uh, a cup uh, again. Let me get this out of the way, and uh, we're going to get our glasses up here. I do think that coaster on the bottom that sticks to the glass is really smart. When I think about our kitchen island yeah. and the fact that you need that glass canister, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And the odds of us uh, cracking it on, on, on the granite or something would be, well, it would just be a big shame. I'm using uh, extra fine sugar here, but I think I... It's been a while since I opened this yeah. package, and so a little humidity might have gotten in there. But the idea was I can't use a sugar cube because... Because uh, it'll never melt. It'll never melt. So I, that's not the most amount of sugar I've ever put in something. So, I And again, I'm doing this for you, babe. I know. I you appreciate know. you making yeah. my coffee just yeah. the way I like yeah. it. Thank you, I babe. Hopefully we'll get some pre-dissolve on that. I'm going to just uh, pour a little bit in here and then some more here. And boy, it just kind of looks too weak uh, to me. Yeah. Uh, give that a stir. And we're gonna add our ice afterwards. Normally I, I would put the ice in first and pour over, but it's really hard to, uh, to dissolve sugar and, and stir the milk in uh, any other way. I don't know where I got this ice, but uh, <laughs> I might need to get a refund. We're not gonna fill these glasses all the way, obviously. We're splitting what is, would typically, you know, 250 mils would be about uh, eight ounces of product. And so it's not that much. That, that, that would be pretty much one serving uh, for anybody else. So that's sort of why we're splitting it here. So 
uh, let me go ahead and uh, give this, uh, give Minister. Boy, it has the uh, the depth of about iced tea. Yeah. Uh, but let's not judge until we get until to the taste. Until we taste it. Yep. yep. You've got one ice cube right over there oh, on the table. one Aaron ice cube. I got one here. I can't be trusted with uh, <laughs> ice cubes by any means. I mean, this is what I think. The flavor is good, but mm -hmm. it's just too weak uh, mm -hmm. for me. And the, you know what? Um, I would have a work around on this, and, and, and let me tell you what that work around would be. Uh, and it, it, if we were doing um, 300 uh, mils here, um, in order to get... Now, this wouldn't be cold brew. This would be iced coffee, but... Uh, if, if we wanted, let me, let me say, let's go to 400 mils. Okay. I put a hundred grams of ice in here and I put 300 grams of hot water in here and I would pull it through that way. It would get to about room temperature when it was done. It wouldn't be cold brew. Cold brew very specifically is not a full extraction of coffee. It would be iced coffee, but personally I prefer iced coffee, right? So, cause it has that full... Uh, body, I, 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 I'm a 10, I'm a 9 to 10 on the hot coffee. Where do you stand? Oh, yeah. I th it yeah. made me a delicious cup of coffee. Yeah. I would be happy to drink that any day. Well, apparently the Colombians know a little something about uh, apparently coffee. Apparently they do. Uh, they have their personal representative, Juan Valdez, on that. And he rides his donkey all day long. <laughs> all right. uh, but on the cold brew, I'm a, I'm a zero. Right. Uh, the workaround, I think, would be to make iced coffee with this brew hot in the chamber, brew into ice. But it wouldn't solve that uh, higher acid problem that no. cold brew That's solves. right. Cold brew, because it doesn't ex extract everything, leaves a lot of acid uh, behind, which if you get an easy upset stomach uh, from coffee, you might prefer that cold brew method. All right. Well, that's the, the VAC one. And... Uh, a 10 on hot coffee, a zero on cold brew. But I would actually recommend this. You got to get past the flying mosquito sound. But other than that, it makes a great cup of coffee. Uh, hopefully you like this episode. If so, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to leave a comment, please do that. Good or bad doesn't matter to us. But know this one thing, and that is when you love the world, the world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two G's.